and it is in you that we have learned so much today. I thank you for that. I want to open up. We've got a few minutes time for some questions, and I know you're probably interested in, you know, maybe some perspective because Swanda is one of my girlfriends that I call and go, I'm dealing with this. What do you think? How do you do it? She's just one of those who really tells you the truth, which is sometimes you really want that. Sometimes I want people to lie to me, but um, no, I really, no, I really, no, I really never do. No, I always actually. want the truth. I always want the truth because you make better decisions that people can help you sit on the outside. So who has a question they want to share, a counseling question or anything they want to ask uh, Wanda today? That's a good question. Two things. Why don't you repeat the question just so we make sure we've got it on the tape. Okay. One of the things, and let me make sure I got this right, she wanted to know that my, she knows my faith is strong, but what is it that keeps me growing and learning in business and mentoring and coaching and pretty much who do I have around me Should to do that? So that, you know what, the, it is a lot of truth. There's a scripture that says if you want to be wise, that you are to be around wise people. So you always, someone said it like this, if you are the top of the heap for your group, get another group. You always want people who can teach you something and everybody, children come to teach us. Experiences come to teach us. So I've always tried to be very open to learn. I have a lot of, I've cried a lot. I've been on my knees, God, why does this keep happening to me? And this is how we learn. And eventually it stops happening when you change some things you're doing. It's all about you, but it's not about you. Does everybody get that? It's really all about your thinking, what you believe, what your faith is, what your foundation is. But when people talk negatively about you or say you're this and that when you're not, that's not about you. That's about them. What you say about yourself, that's all about you. So I try to be around wonderful people. Many of you in this room I know. I've had lunch with, dinner with, spent time with. Um, I want people who are all about love, all about kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, all about living a great life and being happy within themselves so that there's never a time they're around me when they compromise me because it makes them feel better. And that's happened to me a lot in my life. But recognize it when it happens. You know, we shouldn't compromise ourselves around anyone. And when you find yourself with people that you have to compromise who you are to be around them, when this, let me tell you, this speaks first. How many of you all believe that? Because it's, it's Everybody. the truth. This mm -hmm. speaks first. So when you meet someone and they <clears throat> say something to you that's like, you're like Marmaduke. Hmm? <laughs> Right? <laughs> Don't push it aside. I was an expert at that. <laughs> look for people in your life when you meet them, you look them in the eye, you know, and you see the truth and you follow this. This person feels good to me. This person feels right to me. Seek out people who you can learn from. I still talk to some of my college professors. I sit on the Board of Governors at University of Maryland, not because it's my alma mater, because I love it because the people around the table are amazing. So I want to be around them. You know, I believe we rub a little bit, get a little bit, but I want people who love themselves. And so it doesn't matter to me what walk of life they are, because I can't judge you by what you do and what you have, because none of that matters. It's who you are in here. And when this speaks and says, mm, be careful, listen to it. This is my life lesson. I didn't listen to it. I'd be like this. Oh, you? No, because he's cute. <laughs> or, <laughs> but she owns a multi-million dollar business and everybody thinks she's great. Or whatever thought comes to you here, stick with it. We're taught we have to be nice. We have to be ladies. We have to, let me tell you something. See how quickly I could change that. <laughs> Sometimes you have to, my mother used to say this, sometimes you have to look the devil in the eye. Now, I'm not calling anybody devil. That's not what I'm doing. It's a spiritual thing. Because if you spell devil backwards, what does it spell? Lived. That's all it is. Anything that keeps you from an abundant life, that's what evil is. Anything that keeps you from joy and peace and love and gentleness and kindness and forgiveness, that's what evil is. That's what we saw on 9-11. That was pure, unadulterated evil. So in our lives, 
I, I hope I answered your question. I seek out people with a good heart and a good intention. And I also have started my own mentoring and executive coaching, and uh, I call it executive coaching for leaders and leaders in training. Because I have some 20-year-old college students that are my clients, and I also have women that are business owners that are my clients, or women who are building businesses while they're working for other businesses. And my only intention is that, is to say to them, there's not one of us that doesn't have power, not one. There's not one of us that doesn't have purpose, not one. And when you figure out what your passion is, when you figure out what it is you love, is it writing? You know, it's kissing, but I can't make money doing that. <laughs> but, you know, not everything, but, well, yeah, I could. <laughs> anyway. But find out what you love. You know, my mother said it clearly. She said, you can talk yourself into anything. That's the first time I thought, I, I talk that much? <laughs> I love to talk. I love to communicate. I love to hug. I love seeing people have light bulb moments. I love having light bulb moments. I just love people to see the beauty of who they are. And if I can help people do that, I want to do it. Because you bring all of that with you. Everyone says we had to put it in compartments. You know, there's so many things that are in books that I just don't believe in. I bring myself to the office every day. I don't leave Wanda outside and bring somebody else in. Now, sometimes I might bring, leave some attitudes outside. My father taught me that. My father would come in the house every single day of his life, even when he was in a nursing home and you walked in his room. This is how he would greet you. Hey, how's everybody doing? Did everybody have a good day? Every day. That's how my father entered the room. Do you think he didn't just save somebody's life or go into a burning building? My father got blown across the street in a fire, and I didn't know till I was an adult. He never brought that stuff home. You understand what I'm saying? But he brought himself in the house. And so I've learned if I'm having a bad, like I didn't sleep last night really good. I was up and down, and, and that's going on, because you know this is what happens sometimes in the 50s and 60s. <laughs> At least that's what they tell me, so I try to receive it with grace. Sometimes I'm not graceful. Sometimes I wake up and go, what? <laughs> then I'm like, calm down, it's okay. You know, so I had a couple of those nights, but I didn't want to bring that in here. Why? I mean, I brought it up now as a joke, but a lot of times there are certain things you do leave outside the door. I don't want to bring a bad attitude in. I started playing volleyball Monday first time <laughs> in 30 years. They could tell when I walked in with these nails. <laughs> Who, who are you setting to, really? <laughs> I had the best time. Three games, zero and three, but that's okay. Had a good time. Today, I woke up and my back said, mm-hmm. <laughs> so you want to play volleyball after 30 years? My shoulders. I'm like, I'm so glad I didn't have, see? I'm so <laughs> glad I didn't have to zip something up the back. The side was a good thing. But all I'm saying is I'm not going to come in here and say, oh, Cynthia, I hope this goes well because I'm sore in my thigh. <laughs> I don't bring that, but I bring Wanda. Wanda likes to laugh. She likes to have fun. She's serious. She wants to get to the root of a problem so, or a challenge. When my staff comes in my office, they go, Wanda, we have a problem. I'm like, no, we're not. We have a challenge. I'm excited. <laughs> Come on in here. Sit down. Let's see what we got going on. Because I got to ease their anxiety. Don't be anxious about it. It's just work. My staff hears this for me every time I come to visit them, every time I speak. This is what they hear. Remember, if horizon is your priority, your priorities are out of order. This company should never be on the top of your list because it's not on the top of mine. A lot of people don't get that where they work. I didn't get it in my first two jobs. That's why it's in horizon. A lot of things I learned, I realized I went through everything in my life that I've gone through from the balloon man to the rescue mission in Alaska, which we don't have time to talk about, but I'm going to put it in the book, to all of the other things that ha have happened in my life, good, bad, and indifferent. Losing my mother at 23, toughest thing I've ever gone through in my whole life. Uh, but it taught me if I could get through that, I could get through anything. And look at how much her life matters, because I'm still here. And I'm still carrying on her work in ways that she probably never would have imagined. 
right? To this point today, everything I've gone through has allowed me to have the conversation I'm having with you today. And I'm excited about what the rest of the day will bring and what the rest of my life will bring. And as Maya Angelou says, I just want to run on, see what the end will be. That is beautiful. I can't thank you enough. You've been an inspiration. I think you can all see why I madly love Wanda. She just is that friend you go to when you go, I need good advice, that kind of advice that's really rock solid. I can't thank you enough for joining You're us welcome. today. You are such, such a treasure, such a treasure. <laughs> We've got a couple things I want to wrap up with, then I'm going to let you come over and talk to Wanda yourself. One, I just want to give a shout out to Rosemary McDowell, one of our members, who has her new book that she wrote with Les Brown called Fight for Your Dreams. Woohoo! I love that we've got girlfriends who have all, we've got so many girlfriends who are authors. I just love it. That is so cool. Also, I want to give a shout out. We have an incredible event coming in, and where we want you to join us and get involved. It's our Cups Full of Hope, our annual um, breast cancer awareness event that we host that raises money for the Tiger Lily Foundation that helps support women under the age of 40 who are impacted with uh, breast cancer because that growing group of women has greater challenges and they're more greater threats once they're diagnosed with breast cancer. So I hope you join us. We're inviting you to design and decorate a bra, a 36C underwire bra, design and decorate it and it will be auctioned off at an art auction. It is an incredible, I know that sounds weird, but it really is the most incredible event. And think about how compelling it is when you have on your home, on your mantle or in your office, a decorated bra. People will have something to discuss with you no matter what the topic is. So we invite you to get involved. It's called Cups Full of Hope. Go to successinthecity.org and click on Cups Full of Hope on our events page. You'll find out how to get involved. We really want you to be there. And I thank you to everybody who joined us today. Our next interview is going to be with Jen Sterling, the CEO of Red Thinking LLC and was our former chairman of the board. So we're going to find out how, what she's doing now that she's free, so, or what she calls it freedom. So we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.